Another month, another video on everyone's favourite evolution simulator, uh, now called Vita Nova. Uh, if you're new here, then this is the AI Life project that I've been working on for... for too long, man. Basically, this whole thing simulates a bunch of creatures with some AI brains that swim around and eat stuff. Then they can lay some eggs, children hatch, they're a bit mutated, and the cycle repeats, and stuff evolves, or something like that. Just watch my other videos. But that's just the general gist of what's going on. Now in the last video on this project, I started to massively overhaul everything, so that these things can have fully evolving bodies. Uh, as right now, the whole body part of my creature's a bit basic, it's just a bunch of sliders, not like proper limbs. Uh, and this video is just gonna be me continuing that, so technically this is sort of a part two, so maybe you should go watch that video. Just saying. But if you don't care about me, instead wish I'd rot in a ditch, as I don't deserve any of the ad revenue I'm not earning, then the TLDR of what I just did was spend decade on new physics engine, cry, use pre-made physics engine, take small pixel creature, and give limbs. And after all that, just look at it go. And this uh, little simulator lets you create some custom creatures and it'll teach them how to swim the fastest. Uh, and now that you're all caught up, on with the content. Uh, here's the issue. One, I don't really like the physics engine I'm using. Now, in the last video, I did attempt to make my own, but then I just gave up and used something called Box2D to do it all for me. But that was just me pushing the problem as Box2D has one really big flaw and that it doesn't really support multi-threading, which is something that I use a lot, and it's a big reason for the performance of my program. So if I used it for my entire simulation, then the FPS would just be way lower, and it would just crawl, as there are thousands of objects it will have to do stuff for. And since it's a library that I didn't write, then I don't really know how it works exactly, and it, it doesn't really mesh well with my existing code. And I had to make some really disgusting code just to tie in with that little simulator off project. Uh, God knows how awful the code would be if I put this into Vita Nova proper. So I pretty much have no choice but to go for a round two of the custom physics engine. So let's do that. Look at a goo, a bouncing box. Say, it wasn't that hard. Wait, no, 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 don't do that. Okay, now it's working right. So it turns out. When I was doing my physics engine last time, I was this close to getting it right, so that's annoying. So the way that physics is done in most simulations is that it's broken up into two steps. So check to see if there's a collision, and then resolving it and making sure that these things don't collide anymore. Now the resolving bit is powered by this formula. Uh, looks a bit complicated, but don't worry, it can get worse. Uh, the main thing you need to worry about is that if the two objects are colliding, then by using this formula, It'll use how fast they're going compared to each other to calculate the force that has to be applied so that two things aren't colliding anymore, and are instead pushed apart. But the collision checking is the very annoying bit. So first, when I did this, I tried to be smart and do a little bit of cheating using some trig functions, as I already had the code to check for circle collisions, because I did that a while ago. So if I could do some horrors and tweak it into doing rectangle collisions, then it would save me a lot of time and it'd also be pretty performant as cycle collisions are pretty simple to do. But the gods of Olympus reminded me that mortals like I have to settle for but mere simulacras of joy and knowledge. Like to Icarus they clip my wings and force me to wallow in the imperfection and compromise of reality. So I just did it the way you're supposed to do. So how do you check to see if two rectangles are colliding? Well, okay, let's just split these into shapes A and B just to make explaining easier. So step one, take a vertex from shape A and a face from shape B, and next use a formula to find the point on the face that is closest to that point on shape A. And from that, you make a vector that goes from that point to the point to shape A. Next, you take the normal of that face, which is a vector that just points directly out of the face, and you then find the dot product of the normal and that vector you just made. And if it's positive, then that point in shape A is in front of the face and outside of the shape. And if it's negative, then that point is behind the face. Next, you just repeat this for every face, and if it's behind all of them, then that point is inside the shape, 
and then you use that formula from earlier to resolve the collision and apply a force to push them apart. But you will also need to do that for every other point in the shape and then every other point in the other shape too. Now this isn't perfect as if a shape is perfectly inside another then you can actually get stuck inside and technically these two shapes aren't colliding as none of the points are actually inside the other shape. But it's good enough and there's easy-ish ways to fix this if I ever need to. Uh, also, a little side note about that resolution formula from earlier, uh, as since computer math isn't perfect, the objects can actually phase through each other, so I was actually able to use that formula twice and modified it so it changed both the velocity and position to fix that. Uh, not important, but it's nice when you write code that ends up being reused, uh, and it's better than the alternatives, which didn't really work that good. So okay, that's the physics engine finally done. Sort of. There is still one thing I still need to do, as I have all these boxes everywhere, but no way to connect them into joints, uh, which is pretty important for like a moving body. So I gotta do that. No, 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 no. Okay, that's good enough. Now, okay, the explanation for how joints are done is through these things called constraints, uh, which is something that has to always equal zero. Uh, for collision, the constraint is just how deep a point is inside another shape. Well, technically for that one you can have negative and that is fine, that doesn't matter. And for a joint, you have a point on two shapes and the distance between them has to be zero. And I spent a while thinking on how I could do this. But remember that resolution formula from earlier I just reused? Well guess what, it works surprisingly well for joint constraints too. So that's nice, as if you think about it then, if the joint is at a line then you could say that the points are colliding with stuff around it and it needs to be pushed back to fix it, so, yeah, it just, it works, that's what I really care about. So okay, that's done, but these joints are kind of useless if they can't rotate, as for moving bodies you need to not only have bodies, but for them to move too, obviously. And I got it working. Uh, nothing that interesting to say really, and I don't really need the watch time to be stretched any longer anyway, so... Oh, though I do have this funny clip of a bug I had. Uh, look at it, it's funny. But okay, okay, that's enough boring physics talk, so it's time to actually integrate this into the evolution simulator. And bada boom, bada bing... What? Oh, I forgot to turn on drag. Okay, that's much better. And it all works well. The physics is physicking, and they all move like they should. Uh, the collisions do look a bit weird, but that's just because everything has a square or rectangle collision box right now, which doesn't really matter. As these creatures will be changing a lot anyway. So, so okay, here is the first creature with a properly jointed body. Uh, textures can be done later. I just turn them off for now. Uh, so let's see if the collisions work. Well, that's lovely. Okay, I, I overreacted a little bit on that, but now I have put creatures with real jointed and physical bodies that can actually swim. But there is still a slight issue, as in order to swim, you need some kind of air or water drag to push against. And I have that, but it's not that accurate, and as it doesn't really distinguish between like shapes well, and the reactions aren't that good. And if your drag is bad, then that means your swimming will also be bad. So how do you fix that? Hmm, <laughs> well, okay. Air drag works by the actual air molecules colliding with the object. So you should really think of it more like a collision problem. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No, don't tell me. The resolution formula. For the fourth time, I use my resolution formula because I guess that thing can be put anywhere from cracked buildings and broken marriages, and it just patches them up just fine. Like Everywhere I look, I see its face. So now the air collision code actually simulates an object colliding with each face that's as wide as the face and as deep as the object's velocity, and has the mass of the area multiplied by the density of the air, water, whatever I'm calling it. And it all works just fine, because the resolution formula can simulate it all for me as now it's actually pushing and uh, sweeping all the air water stuff away. Though in my code I didn't set the depth of the air object thing to the velocity and I actually set it to the velocity squared as that's what the voice has told me to do. Nice, okay, okay, the physics stuff has been all patched up. 
I guess before I get off the big loss thing, I should patch up the graphics as right now each limb is a plain solid segment, but the issue is that these body parts can be any size, so can't really design any custom sprites, uh, as I'll need to do many for different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to need to use something called shaders to generate the textures for me on the fly. Now, I'm not going to really try and explain them, just watch an Ace Roller video, but what a shader is, is that it's a program on the GPU that can handle stuff like graphics. Now, I already use shaders, as without them you can't use the GPU, so the creatures and other textured things are drawn with shaders, but a very simple one. Like, the most complicated thing it can do is take this black and white creature texture and tint it so I can have multi-coloured creatures without needing lots of different textures. Though I did design a really nice shade of the background that gives it that infinitely thin grid look, which I'm proud of, okay? I spent some time on it. So okay, let's break this up into steps. I first made a shader that colours the creatures according to the position of different pixels, which made this weird pattern. And also this one, if you make the dots really small, but that's a graphical issue. Tom Scott, may he rest in peace, made a video on the Moiré effect if you care about that. Then I also made a shader that takes the UV coordinates of each point. What's a UV coordinate? Well, okay, think of the first shader as having the absolute position of each pixel from 0 to how big the object is, like 25. While the UV shader has the positions of each point from 0 to 1, uh, no matter the size of the object or segment. And with these two shaders, you can combine them into anything. The absolute coordinate shader can be morphed into shading the outline of each segment, and the UV coordinate shader can be morphed into this pixelated cell thing that uses sine and some other functions to distort it. Then you can combine the two shaders to form this shader, and oh look, doesn't that remind you of that creature texture from earlier? And ta-da, look at that with some multiplication in the shader, you got colour. Though I also tweaked it a little bit so that the corners are chopped off, which I think spices it up a little. It's not perfect, but I can change it later and it does the job better than anything I had earlier. Okay, so I've been putting off this part of the video, so let's just get on with it. Uh, the issue is that I have almost everything done except for the mutating bodies, as they are physical and they can swim and can learn, but they cannot change shape. And this part is important as if they can't mutate in a good way, then the bodies won't evolve, and any changes will just result in a much worse body plan that just kills the creature, then oh look, we're back to square one. So who better to copy than Mother Nature herself? So let's talk genetics. Quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert, and I'm probably wrong with a lot of stuff I'm going to say, as I've learnt most of this through googling in the midst of a delirious haze and skimming through Wikipedia pages. Do not trust what I'm going to say as fact, okay, remember? Remember that, that's important. And I'm an expert on this topic, so you can trust what I'll say as fact, and I've done a lot of very extensive and thorough research on this topic. Now, what a gene actually does is it codes for a specific protein to be made, and that protein does a specific action. The gene we actually care about are homeobox genes, which are genes that code for proteins that activate other genes. And the star of this show is Hox genes, which were first discovered in flies, but more on that later. What they do is split up your body into segments, because you and a lot of creatures are actually a segmented being. And each segment has its own Hox gene that codes for a protein that will then activate all the other genes that then makes that section a head, a torso, legs, nipple. Uh, actually, I don't think that one uses Hox genes, but you get my point. Though, I should probably also say that one gene never does just one thing. Uh, like, look at all the things that Hox C13 does, like nail, hair, and tongue development but it's just easier to simplify some things. And also, fun fact, your body, when it's developing, can't actually tell which side is left and right, so you end up with your body actually mirroring itself, because the Hox genes tell the cells where it is up and down, and some other chemical signals tell it whether it's in the back or front, but nothing to distinguish between right and left, so that causes you to become bilaterally symmetrical, remember that, that's important, though that's not true for everything. Now the real smart part about Hox genes is that the order they are located in the genome is actually the order they'll get activated in fetal development. So you start off in the head, and then the Hox gene for that area gets activated. Then as you develop as a fetus, the next Hox genes will take over in sequence until, et voila, a thing was made. 
Uh, remember that fly diagram from earlier? Well, that is Drosophilia melanogaster. I think that's how you say it. Also known as the common fruit fly. And scientists have done a lot of genetic butchering to them in the name of, well, I guess, science, uh, especially in Hox gene research. Changing the Hox genes can actually do crazy stuff. Like, if you remove a Hox gene, it'll actually stop a segment from forming. Uh, duplicating one will just duplicate a segment and cause it to appear twice. But a crazy example is Antenopedia, which involves swapping Hox genes around until the fly develops not antennas on its head like normal, but instead it actually develops legs on its head. Which sounds to me like a spit in the face to God, but the sinners that did those experiments will get what's coming. So how the bodies will mutate in my sim is that the creatures will now have a genome where each gene will store how big that segment will be. Now I know that Hox genes don't actually store any information about the segment but activates the genes that do, but that's just added complexity I don't need right now, but later when I try and fit stuff like eyes into this, I might do that. And to store any limbs, then inside the gene could be another row of genes that instead represent the limb segments and sort of just branches off. I know that's not how it's actually done, but deal with it, it's my video. And that will sort of simulate what T-Box genes do. I think, like I said earlier, I don't really know what I'm doing and this is all just a really big guess as what I've gathered from my limited knowledge is that limb growth is pretty similar to segment growth in how it works, except that a specific Hox gene activates some genes to start the growth chain in a certain area. And since I'm going for a bilateral design for my creatures, then my genome will always result in symmetric creatures, as it makes them more aerodynamic and better swimmers. Uh, radial and all that can be done for another day for another video. But enough talking, time to code. I love my life so much. <laughs> Balls. No! <laughs> Balls. Okay, okay, here's an actually serious example. And the swimming looks really good. Like, it just looks natural. And also if you compare it to how the swimming worked before, the brains and body are the exact same. All I changed was the strength of the joints and the old version looks just pathetic. Like, come on, it's swimming backwards. And the new body system just works. I can design some custom creatures with different shapes and to mutate, it could just remove a segment, copy a segment or just add a segment. And the same applies to the limbs, though the mutation chance for the bodies is a lot lower than the brain as it needs to give the brains like some time to learn how to use the new body. And after tweaking the brains and genetics a bit, it just works, like finally, I'm done. Oh god, this video took forever. Like, look at these guys. They can swim, they can eat, they can lay eggs and hatch. Uh, I did have to simplify and remove some features though, as to get this working. Like, an example is that when they eat a pellet, it insta-lays an egg and in a random point in the world, and the only way for them to die is old age. But I did all that, uh, so adding this body stuff was easier and I didn't need to worry about anything else, like, the energy system alone would have been, just, it would have made me lose it trying to balance all that. So, anyways, that stuff I removed, it will be added back, but right now, it's a bit pointless, as I'm gonna change so much about the simulator that I just have to recode everything anyways, so, stick around, who knows, you might see some interesting things happen. I'm not gonna reel too much on what I'm planning to do in the next few videos, mostly for suspense and to force you to join the discord server where you can get sneak peeks updates on the next video and it's also the place to download everything and try this out though i'll also put this on itch.io soonish but things will change and they will change a lot and who knows maybe vita nova will try and push what's possible and push ai life to whole new levels but you're gonna have to wait to find that out so anyways like comment something join the discord and subscribe with the bell button on to make the algorithm like me more, and see you in the next video.